Oh, morning, Quintus. Can you turn the light on for me? Right, little buddy. Let's go. I just can't. I'm sure I've forgotten something that's happening today. I better check the calendar. Oh, it's Lydia's birthday. But where is she? Lydia? Lydia? Oh, what's that in the vent? I can't get it from this side. Maybe I should try the other end of the vent. I can't reach it. Quintus, do you think you can get it for me?
Lydia? <laughs> Lydia, where are you going? It's locked, but where did I put the key? Steady, careful. Ah, damn it. Maybe Quintus can get to the keys from the side. There you go, Quintus. Get the key for me, buddy. Oh? This is Alan Shore. Yes. Who is this? We have your daughter. Yes. Who is this? We have your daughter. If you want to see her again, come to 6200 Northeast Wilding Road. My old recording studio. Right, little buddy. Let's go. The door to the studio is never opened by key. The receptionist had to buzz you through, but the power's down. I'll have to turn that back on first. Huh? What's that?
She's in the secret room? I can't remember where that is, but if that's where Lydia is, I must find it. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Oh, hello? Mama's gonna buy you. Is that Christy a Gray? Christy? It's locked. If I remember right, the CEO always kept hold of the archive room key. Okay, Quintus, see if you can open this one. There we go, Quintus. See if you can work out how to open the door. Oh, Quintus, uh, well done, buddy. Um, I'm not going to ask any questions.
Alan Shaw, take me, Christy Gray, to be your lawfully wedded wife. I do. And will you, Christy Gray, take Alan Shaw to be your lawfully wedded husband? I do. Hmm. My Christy. There we go. Now back to the studios. Yeah, we do. Um, we were thinking... Lydia. Okay, now the electricity is back on. It's time to find the buzzer to open the door to the studios. Wow, I forgot how impressive this place was.
Christy Gray. She was the love of my life, and the mother to Lydia. But after a traumatic birth, we lost her. Secret room. I remember now. Come on, Lydia, please be here. No, no, no. Oh. Are you sure, Quintus? Oh. Okay, little buddy. You've got it from here. Alan, you lost our daughter. No, no, I, she, she was. You were meant to protect our daughter, Alan. I, I'm so sorry. No, you must get her. Quintus was now alone, with no Alan to look after, but Quintus knew what he had to do. He must find out what happened to Lydia. The Secret Room Once a hideaway for the artists and bands of Andromeda Records, Quintus had a feeling that this room wasn't such a pleasant place anymore, and that it had been blocked off for a reason. When Quintus found his way to the top of the table, he couldn't believe what he had found. Presents. Birthday presents, marked with the name Lydia. What were these doing here, Quintus thought to himself. But what was more concerning, though, was the book Quintus found next to the presents. This book did not give Quintus a good feeling. Somehow, the book appeared to have opened up a crack in a wall. Quintus went to investigate. A strange light was coming from this newly formed crack. Quintus found the light to be very alluring and decided to have a closer look.
Quintus couldn't believe what he was seeing in front of him. A familiar surrounding from photos Quintus had seen. A kitchen, but not just any kitchen. This one was from Alan and Christie's first home together, before Lydia, before even Quintus. Quintus was not sure how he got here, but he knew he wasn't meant to be here and needed to find his way back. Quintus scanned the room and could see another book like the first across the room on the kitchen table. However, the table was too high up for Quintus to reach the book, so he needed to formulate a plan. Maybe I could use the cat to knock the book off the table, Quintus thought to himself. I'll have to get the cat's attention to the table though. I should try to find something I can throw onto the table. I'm scared, Alan. I know, Christy. I know. What if... What if there is a problem? It'll be okay. The doctor said it will be fine. They've spotted the problems early and can accommodate for the issues. I have a bad feeling, Alan. I'll take care of you, Christy. Both of you. Quintus found a tin of cat food in the fridge and thought, this will surely get the cat's attention. Quintus stumbled upon a giant broom and pondered. If he used all his strength, he may be able to push the broom over to reach the island in the center of the kitchen. From the island, he may be able to throw something to the table.
That ought to do it, Quintus said proudly, and he was right. The cat heard his beloved tin of cat food hitting the table and came to investigate. And even better, just as planned, the cat knocked the book onto the floor. Quintus stands on top of the book once more, and again, another crack opens up for the little mouse to explore. Quintus steps through the light and ends up back at the secret room once more. But things appear to be slightly different from last time, making Quintus wonder if he'd even returned to the same room or the same point in time at all. Quintus made his way to the top of the table to find the book yet again. Though hesitant this time, Quintus let his curiosity get the better of him and decided to step onto the book once more. Stepping through the light and out into a new room, Quintus got a sense of familiarity once more. Not memories from photos this time though, Quintus had been here for this one. This was Lydia's room when she was a baby. Quintus found a toy car park in the corner of the room. He remembered this one. It used to have a working elevator. It was battery operated, but it appeared that there was no battery in place. Quintus knew what he must do. Find a battery for the elevator, and then maybe he could get on top of the bedside table and get a glimpse of a little baby Lydia.
Quintus found Lydia's doll's house, which he had many a fond memory of, as Quintus was never kept in a cage in the Shaw household, but instead made his home in this plastic heaven. Yes, a battery for the elevator, Quintus thought to himself as he picked the battery up and made his way back to the toy car park. There we go, Quintus muttered. Now I can get up onto the bedside table. Once up onto the table, Quintus found a tape player. Not remembering this being here, Quintus decided to press play and see what was on the tape. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Mama's gonna buy you a mockingbird. Sweet dreams, my little angel. Remember... I am always with you, no matter what. Quintus arrives at the cot, but to his dismay, there is no Lydia in sight. Oh Lydia, where are you? Quintus whimpered. What Quintus did find in the cot, though, was the book yet again. His ticket back home, he thought. Quintus hadn't found Lydia, so thought it best he go back and report to Alan.
Quintus was not prepared for what he found in the secret room this time. The room had been wrecked. Was this present day Quintus Ford, or was it another wrong turning in time? Quintus made his way through the wreckage to find some answers. Quintus made his way through the wreckage until the book came crashing into view. This time, however, Quintus did not even place one tiny toe on the book, yet the book started opening another crack in the wall. Maybe this one will get me back to where I need to be, Quintus pondered, and continued towards the newly formed crack. Quintus stepped out of the light to find himself in some very familiar surroundings. The Shaw residence, his home. In fact, if Quintus wasn't mistaken, this could even be the same day the story began. This was Lydia's birthday. If it was, then Quintus knew what he had to do. Wake up, Alan. Quintus arrived in the dining room to see Alan at the table, asleep with his head in his arms, just as Quintus had anticipated. Now all that was left to do was to wake Alan up. shouldn't be here. Quintus did not know what to do. Who was this man? What was he doing in their house? How can he wake up Alan now? 
happen and it dawned on Quintus. He doesn't have to wake up Alan. Because he already did. Get in there. I know this place. This is Churchview. Christie's hometown. Where she's buried. Why is it so quiet here? I better go see Christy. Hmm, locked. The gate is electronic, but the power's down. I know the drill. Quintus? Hey, you're not Quintus. Right. Back to the church.
Now, Christy. Christy? Wait, what? Alan, quickly, into the church. They know you're here. Who? A and who are you? Quickly, inside. What's happening? Alan, we don't have a lot of time. Who are you? It's me, Alan. Charlotte Trinity. You know, your A&R representative? Charlotte? What? What happened to you? You really haven't worked this all out yet? What happened? They killed me, Alan. Who? Andromeda Records. And they're going to kill Lydia if you don't hurry. Quickly. Down to the sewers. It will lead you to where you need to be. I'll hold them off. I got to find Lydia. I guess this is the only way forward.
They made me write that letter, you know. The one informing you that you are no longer a musician for Andromeda Records. They needed you out of the way. But why? So they could carry out their master plan. They believed if they took everything from you, you would be too down in self-misery that you wouldn't see the absent truth. Though, once I found out they had taken Lydia from you too, I couldn't stand it. I thought if I called you and told you to go to Andromeda Records, you would be able to put a stop to it. That was you on the phone? Voice changer. Sadly, once they realized what I had done, they decided to cut me out of Andromeda Records too. Charlotte, that's terrible. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm still not understanding the big picture here, though. There's no time to explain, Alan. My light's dimming, and you've got to get to Lydia before it's too late. Just remember, the book is the key. Wait, what book? Where is it? Is the key. Charlotte? Charlotte? Okay, I've got to find this book. Where am I? Quintus? Quintus! I know, little buddy. It's so good to see you. Right. Time to find this book. Okay, Quintus, see if you can find anything that will help us here.
The book. That must be it. Huh? You know this book? Okay, let's go get it. Lydia! We found you! Lydia! Lydia! Wake up! What do we do? Maybe the book has some answers. Time travel? That sounds too dangerous. Resurrection. Raise a loved one from the dead, but a deal with the devil doesn't come free. Sacrifice a relative of the deceased for the devil to resurrect thee. So, that means... So that means someone has to die. Oh, Alan. You weren't meant to get in the way of this. What are you doing? Haven't I lost enough? Andromeda Records was going under, Alan. Ever since we lost Christy, the angel of the violin. We haven't made any money, and you... You stopped making music for us as well. We had nothing left. Then we heard of a book that could change everything. It could resurrect the dead. We could bring Christy back. We could reunite her not only with you, but the world. And bring back Andromeda Records to its former glory. But we needed a blood relative to trade for her life. Lydia, you can't do this! I'm afraid it's too late, Alan. We have Christie's body. We have Lydia in the blood circle. Now we just need to make the sacrifice. No! <laughs> There must be a way to stop this. To reverse a curse that has already begun, these musical notes need to be played or sung. The devil hates melodies so pure and sweet. Play these notes, the devil will retreat. I haven't played in so long. But I have to. up little child bring back that darling smile i can't carry on without you without that sweet noise the laughter from all the joys if there's no us there's no getting through through this life through all this pain it wouldn't be the same it's time to fix this world and make up I know I can't get by without you by my side Little child, it's time to wake up Wake up Yeah, yeah, yeah Oh, wake up Yeah, 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 yeah Quintus lay down in his nice warm bed as Lydia leant over and kissed his head. Good night, Quintus. The end. Hehe, <laughs> I love that story. <laughs> Are you ever going to take that costume off? Um, no. I love it. <laughs> okay. Daddy? Yeah? How did you find me again? Well, I had a lot of help. Quintus? Yay, Quintus!
Well done, little buddy. My hero. He certainly was. Good night, Lydia. Good night, Quintus. I'm going to record this, as my memory has been horrible lately. This has been the strangest day. From Lydia going missing, to being guided by the spirit of Charlotte, to finding out that Andromeda Records planned all this, and, of course, seeing Christy again. When they dug up Christy, they didn't think about her spirit, the spirit of a mother who never even got a chance to hold her baby. You dig that spirit up, that spirit is going to come back with every emotion that they felt before they passed. The anger, the pain, the longing for their child. Christy's spirit only wanted one thing, to help me get Lydia back. It was hard to say goodbye to her again. Luckily, I had Quintus, or I don't think I could have made it through today. Quintus is Lydia's favorite toy. I always make up stories about his day to make her smile. It was strange. When Christie's spirit knocked me out, I had the strangest dream of Quintus time-traveling. Imagine that. I'll have to tell Lydia about that one tomorrow. <laughs>